Hey guys, all right, back with another video, and today's going to be about radios. It's going to be the 10 most powerful CB radios in 2024. It'll be mobile radios. Um, from what I did, I did I did some research online, and um, hey, if first I would have right right away say if there's a a radio I missed, I did my best to find this information online, and if it's if I missed a radio, let me know if there's one out there. Um, I may have missed one, but I did my best to find the top 10. And uh, from actually even the, the least powerful on the list is still well over 200 watts. So, um, and then we go to the, you know, from I'm going from the least powerful of the most powerful out there than to the most powerful in the market. So, all right, so I got the top 10, here we go. All right, so number 10 on the list is the uh, Ranger RCI 2970N2 at around 280 watts. That's uh, with a tune. So, when, so let me just do also another little caveats when it comes to the power. That's assuming like a basic tune, nothing crazy, no big modifications. Uh, something where a shop would, um, you know, do do a couple, just basically like you know, frequency expand it and uh, do do the tune. No final swaps or you know, changing out you know, major components type of thing. All right, so that's that's just want to put that out there. So around 280 watts, and again, the, even the power could be a little bit debatable. Um, you know, some people kind of some I notice uh, some shops claim a little more, a little less. This is kind of kind of an average number. So again, keep that in mind. Okay, so uh, the Ranger 2970 N2. Uh, this is um, it's got eight IRF 520s and. The estimated price around four hundred ninety dollars. That's about the going rate of the, uh, what I've seen out there in the market. So um, and um, it's so right away I'll say with the twenty nine seventies they're really good um, radios if you're a sidebander like that's majority of what you use is sideband and or if you're into you know ham radio operator you want a ten meter uh, ham radio. This is really of all the radios on the list here the twenty nine seventy is going to be the only one really that's a true I say ham radio that's also a CB, where the others to me are really CBs that can do ham radio. I'll, just, I'll cover that a little more in the next few slides. So, all right, next one on the list here is also a 2970. There's the N3 version. So it's the same, basically the same radio, but with uh, different finals. In this case, there's eight RT1s. These are Ranger proprietary transistors. So at around 380 watts. So for an extra 100 watts, you're paying... Well, at least price went from 490 with the uh, N2 to around 650 bucks with the uh, the N3. So you're paying about 160 dollars more just for another 100 watts. So maybe not the best deal there for that. But there's other radios on the list, so we'll keep going here. All right. So number eight on the list is the Ranger Superstar SS 148 Pro at around 450 watts. It has eight rt3 transistors for finals uh, ranger proprietary finals uh estimated price around 600 bucks that's what i've been seeing uh this is it the only one on the list that's am only so hey if you're if you're an am only user you have no interest in sideband you never use it, you don't care this radio might be for you actually towards the end of the video i have a uh, cost price per watt comparison and this one is actually one of the better radios when it comes to the dollars per watt. So, which it makes sense. It doesn't even have sideband, so obviously there's cost savings there. Um, so, yeah, if you're an AM only user, this this might be a good radio for you. All right. So the next five radios, they're all around 500 watts. So yeah, so this could be number seven on the list as, a, as we're working our way down or even number three. So keep that in mind. It could be number seven, six, five, three, or four or three. So it's kind of a tie, they're close. So this is the Ranger Superstar SS158. Uh, it has for the uh, 2879s as final. So they're RT28s in the Ranger world, but they're really just HG2879s. Uh, estimated price around 750 bucks. So it's getting up there in price. So although you think about it, okay, so keep this in mind, $750 is a lot of money for a, say, CB radio. But if you were to buy a separate four pill amplifier, you know, a 42879 amp, especially one with say sideband biasing or with a one driver, you know, like one drive and four, you know, the prices get up there probably close $600, $650 nowadays for an amp like that. So if you're buying a radio separately and a separate amplifier separately, you know, the price would be more. 
So you're actually for 750, in, you're basically getting like a four pill um, built in. Now, granted, it does a little less power, 500 watts, but but um, uh, still, just keep that in mind. The price, you know, you're you're getting an amplifier with it, so it's actually it's actually cheaper uh, to have an all-in-one radio than it is to have a separate radio and a separate amplifier. All right, next on the list is the, uh, and the next, you know, these five are in no particular order. Also around 500 watts is the RCI 2970N4. So of all the 2970s, this one's the most powerful in the market. Uh, also has four 2879s, price around $800. So if you're interested in like the RCI, the 2970 series, uh, this is this is the most powerful version of, of the three on the list here. All right, next on the list is the RCI 99N4. So also with 42879s, also around $800. So this, you know, it's interesting. This is more like, say, this is more of a form fa factor like a CB radio, where the 2970 is more like a ham radio or more sideband friendly, I'd say, also. So if you're primarily an AM user, I'd say maybe this, and you don't really talk sideband or, or you're not interested in like ham radio, 10 meters, uh, maybe this radio would be a better choice. A kind of comparing because other than that there's similar power similar similar cost all right next on the list is the ranger rci 69 ffb4 at around 840 dollars uh, it also has uh for the hd 2079s also around 500 watts with a tune so now what's interesting there's three versions of this radio so next on the list here is another it's a look very similar it's the rci 69 ff b6 so there's a b4 and a b6 and the difference that i see they're both around 500 watts they have the same features uh the price of the previous one there is 840 this one's 850 so a ten dollar difference in the price that i found uh very close in price uh but this one has different finals um so this one had the 2879s where the uh, B6 has eight RT6s, so Ranger proprietary RT6s, eight of them instead of four 2879s. Also around 500 watts output. Now, you could say this radio is a little better and has one feature, has the SWR protection circuit um, transmit cutoff. So it'll actually cut off your transmit when you're, if you have a really bad SWR, like let's say a short in your coax, it'll actually stop the transmitter from transmitting. And that's kind of a nice feature. Actually, the next few radios have this feature. The rest of them, the previous ones I, I, on the list there don't have that feature. So I kind of like that feature. Uh, so, um, But there's another version of this radio. There's three of these. So th the reason why I wouldn't go with this is because there's now, there's the C6. And the difference is it's around, now this is now, we're now past those 500 watt radios. Now we're on number two on the list at 600 watts with a tune. So the difference is now, these have the same final, the B6 and the C6, but the drivers are different. So the, the B6 does around 500 watts because it has uh, two IRF 520 drivers um, driving the uh, eight RT6s, where this has two RT5 drivers driving the eight RT6s. Gets a little more power out of it, around 600 watts. Price is still around $850. It also has the SABR protection circuit. So if you're interested in this type of radio, I would think that the C6 would be the one to get of these three very you know variants. All right, and number one on the list, the winner is the Ranger Longhorn Superior N6. Does around 700 plus watts and uh, has six ERF 9530 finals. Estimated price around eight hundred and eighty dollars, so not not cheap. We're getting up there in price, but it is the winner. And I I know some users out there that have these radios, and they're getting seven hundred fifty, even eight hundred watts out of these uh, radios. So pretty impressive. So I'd say this, you know, I've seen it. It's not so. Um, this is it. This is the winner um, of the uh, you know the most powerful radio you can get right now in twenty twenty four. As of uh, September of twenty twenty four, I'm make, making this video, and so. Keep that in mind also with the prices and what's available when you know you watch this video all right so the summary and like the cost per watt here's kind of a list here um some takeaways i think you know the uh, superstar uh, 148 pro is am only um but at pretty good cost per watt 
at a dollar thirty three. Um, but the overall winner is the rain is the Longhorn actually at, uh, when it comes to the uh, cost per watt. Yes, it's the most expensive at eight eighty, but it also because it does more power. You know, you're dividing it by you know the watts by the you know the cost. So it's a dollar twenty six. Uh, um, you know per watt, you know, per watt. So that's really the, um, you know, the old overall winner there as well. So other takeaways. So voltage, you know, when it, keep in mind when you, when you feed your radio a different voltage, you're going to see different output power. Um, so this was assuming around 14 volts. Uh, so if you increase your voltage to your radio, you do get more output power, but probably not a good idea or recommended, you know, to put it right on the edge. You know, if you're running like 15, some people go, you know, 15, 5, 16 volts. I don't really recommend that. I mean, you're getting just a negligible difference in signal strength. It's probably not even measured, hardly even seen on the other end. So I don't really recommend that. Um, some other things. Okay, so the 2879 radios, and this is where maybe I want some of you guys' feedback. I've seen some... Um, shops claiming you know 800 900 plus watts out of the 2879 radios like the if you had say for the toshiba 2879s for finals of some of these radios now i want to know i know from what i could tell it looks like they require some some you know some significant modifications it's not just a tune to get that kind of power out so so i i still think the longhorn is you know the you know the radio you could just buy out of the box with a tune and it's doing this type of power so this, you know, so, but if you're going to have a contest, you know, and say who's, you know, which rate is the most powerful ever, like if you're going to have a shootout, I, I, I'd i say probably a, a more modified 2879 radio would probably still be the overall winner, let's say, you know, and all else is said, but, but, uh, you know, still I'll give it to the Longhorn because, you know, really it is out of the box like that. Um, some other things. Um, so again, I covered the SWR protection. I don't know if it's a big deal for some of you or some or not. If you're mobile, it's kind of nice. Um, if you're base station, you're always watching everything on your meter, you know, of course, um, you know, it's less probably critical. Uh, also keep in mind, you know, some of the frequency ranges of these uh, radios, they go like 10, 11, 12 meters. You know, you, you don't have a built-in antenna tuner on any of these radios. So again, if you're in the ham radio, you know, you're kind of limited. In my experience, if you go on 10 meters, you know, you can go on, say, channels 1 through 40, and then the lower portion of 10 meter band, like up to maybe 28.5, and you'll still be, you know, within a 2 to 1 SWR or better. Um, but you can't go all the way down to 12 meters and all the way up, you know, to 10 meters, you know, on the same antenna. You'd have to get an antenna tuner or swap out uh, antennas. Uh, if, you know, you want that more frequency agility, you're better off going with a radio with a built-in antenna tuner, like, a, say, an ICOM 7300 or something where it's built in. Or, well, that's not even really a mobile radio, but, but you get the point. Um, some other things. So 2970 has memory channels. It's the only one on the list that has memory channels. It's the only one that has split frequency, but it doesn't have a PL tone, so it doesn't really support true 10 meter FM repeaters. So that's kind of goofy to me that it doesn't have a PL tone, but it has the split frequency. So it's like it has one part of what's required for 10 meter repeater, but it doesn't have the second part, which is the requirement for a PL tone to get into the repeater. So I'm not sure about that. Why is that? As far as I know, I could be corrected, I, if, unless the later versions, but I know the 2950s don't have PL tones. I didn't see anywhere in the uh, specs where it does it. Even my striker, I have a, a striker 955, and it, it even has support for PL tones. So I could technically get on 10 meter FM repeaters with that, but not the 2970s. Um, and then uh, I'm going to give a special shout out to Chris Holland over at Superior CBs in Ontario, California. He it was helpful. I sent him a bunch of emails back and forth and it was uh, helpful in getting some of the information to make this video. So thank you, Chris. Um, that's a thing um, I did. Um, I actually have a, access to a remote station um, with uh, ICOM RSBA1 remote software. I was able to connect to a station about 10 or 15 miles away from me. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a signal comparison. So I did I kind of simulated, you know, doing transmit power and then having a receiver over there, the ICOM 7100, um, and then getting a signal strength comparison. So this chart is kind of showing what if you had this much power with this radio, what would the signal be? So with the RCI 2970N2, for example, at around 280 watts, I started that was the benchmark, the starting point for me to measure a signal. And 
I was uh, hitting the receive station around S8. If you look closely, it'll see it's just below S8 on the S meter. Going to 380 watts, which is like having a um, the uh, RCI 2970 N3, it's just above S8. It's like S8 and a, I don't know, a fifth. Then going to 450 watts, which is like having, say, a Superstar 148 Pro, it's about eight and a third. Then going to 500 watts, it moved it over a little more, about eight and a half. And that's, remember, 500 watts was like five of these radios. The uh, the, the uh, Ranger SS-158, the 2970N4, the 99N4, and the FFB4, and the FFB6. Um, also, okay, so moving on, the uh, the 600, okay, we're going to 600 watts now. That was the, um, basically, there's just one radio, the RCI 69FFC6. Um, and that was, I at 600 watts, the signal was just below S9. And then going to 700 watts, which which is like having a Ranger uh, Longhorn N6, the signal's right at S9. So it went from 280, you know, from 280 watts to 700 watts. That's about a 4 dB in decibel difference in signal. It made a little more than a 1 S unit difference on the ICOM 7100. Now, they say, you know, it's sick. It's you know, receivers. You're supposed to have. It's supposed to be 6 dB. Uh, change for one S unit. So you can see the radio is not exactly accurate. It's, and that's typical of all radios. It's not exactly 6 dB per, per S unit. It's close. And in this case, it was actually a little more than one S unit for just 4 dB of difference. So that's just a takeaway as well. So I thought it'd be fun to show this because there yeah, you can see, you know, is it worth it to have more power? Yeah, it definitely is. It gets stronger, you know, it makes a difference. See, somebody that was running a, you know, if this signal and somebody was, let's say, a lot of skip coming in and this, somebody was hitting S8 and your S9, well, if it's that close, it, uh, you know, then you would win, right? <laughs> so, but I think it, when, it, you know, from what I could tell, the takeaway of this, in my opinion, is I think when you start getting 450, 500 watts, the difference between 450 or 500 and then 600 and 700 is very little that you really should be really making your buying decision based on the features uh, of the radio and you know let's say user friendliness like let's say if you're a ham radio operator you definitely you know and you talk on 10 meters a lot or or you're on sideband a lot i mean ultimately i would say get the the 2970 at 500 watts then over a longhorn you know but if you're primarily am user and you're primarily on you know the normal 40 channels uh, you know the longhorn would be the better way to go so that's just my opinion I like you guys' feedback as well have you guys owned these radios i also want to kind of get some fact checking what's uh i may have gotten something wrong here uh let me know put that in the comments please and uh, i could even put it then in the description here of some things that maybe oh you're you're definitely off on this so you know let me know <laughs> you know and hopefully this video is uh helpful for any of you guys shopping for a radio so you know this would be helpful if like oh man i want to make a buying decision maybe this video could be helpful uh for you for that so anyway uh thanks for watching uh if you like the video please give it a like and um subscribe if you want and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos all right thanks for watching guys take care